Hi, my name is Glenn and welcome to my boat project. I'm very excited about this episode because this is a major milestone for me. I've, I started this project in June of 2020 and here we are September of 2023. So I've been working on my boat project for over three years now. It does not seem like it's been that long. It's just been a part of my life. One of those kind of ongoing things that I work on here and there where I get a chance. You know, kind of like mowing the lawn and the other yard work. It was just part of my life for so long. But with this major milestone, I'm going to finish the interior of the cabin, which means the outside of the boat has been refurbished, refinished, repainted um, from the keel up to the top. And the inside has also been refurbished and repainted and all brand new furniture. So I'm gonna show you in this episode what I do to finish things up. I'm not doing all of the finishing work on the, on the interior. There's still lots of little minor details to do with that. But stick around to the very end because I have a big surprise for you. I took my belt sander with a level on top of it so I could approach a level flat surface for the tops of the seats to go on. And here I'm cutting out from my template the top of the, the seat and we're gonna see if it fits. So this is just one sheet of ply. I'm going to double it up so it'll be a little stronger, but let's slide this thing into place on the port side underneath the cockpit and see how I did with my template. Not bad. I'm pretty impressed. It's not perfect, of course, but the trim will clear that up. And I have another piece for the forward section. So there's two eight foot sheets of plywood going on. And that almost reaches from bow to stern. I still have to do the V berth. Not bad. And let's see if that template I used on the port side will work for the starboard. Ooh, it's a little too wide by about, what's that, an inch, inch and a half? I think I can shorten that up pretty well and use the same template, not have to rebuild a new one. I'm very excited about that. All right, here I'm pouring wood glue on the surface of my one solid sheet of plywood. This is a very, very thin plywood. It's less than a quarter of an inch. I think it's like four millimeters if I remember right. And to double, to make it double thick, to make it stronger horizontally, I am using scraps of plywood to put on the backside. Now this isn't gonna be seen, so it's all right. And the glue is holding it all together. And then I have this heavy piece of wood to weigh it down. Now I'm mixing up my penetrating epoxy, which I just love this stuff, and I'm showing it way longer than you need to see it just because I find it mesmerizing. But I coat all of my wood on the inside of my boat with penetrating epoxy. So all the wood you see, at some point, if I haven't penetrated it before I install it, I will afterwards. I like the red light, even though it's summer, the red light puts the heat right where I want it, and it does help the cure time shorten. So I'm shortening the cure time by using the red light as well as the warm weather. So it's not hot, hot in here, but it's warm enough. And I kind of like the bubbles because it roughens up the surface, but I didn't want it to be too rough. So it's still going to be a bit rough as I'm not going to sand it afterwards. So it's going to have some texture on it, but I don't want the bubbles. Plus the bubbles might leave some gaps where water could infiltrate the wood itself. Now this is one of those bumps that you'll find all over the hull of the Aquarius. They're on the underside of the hull deck or the deck and they're on the inside of the hull and they were used for manufacturing. They don't need to be there. It's a piece of wood covered over by fiberglass and in this case, it was in the way. Something else that I felt I didn't need was this piece that's under the cockpit. Since I have the support on the sides, I don't need that anymore. One thing I didn't like was how irregular the inside of the hull was where I'm going to be walking. 
And this is completely superficial what I'm doing here. I mean, it will add some strength, but I'm adding a layer of chop strand mat to the bottom so I can have a little bit more consistency with the bottom because there's many, many different textures. And I didn't want to go to the extent of fairing it, which would just be a ridiculous amount of work and a ridiculous amount of money. However, I didn't do a great job with this polyester resin and it started setting up on me over this big space. I, I did the whole walking area that I have, the whole deck area that I have inside the hull. And some of it was hardening up on me, some of it clumped up, and so I had to go through and sand it down. And then I actually applied a little bit more chop strand mat to even that out before I painted. This is primer, but then I'm going to paint the entire interior. I, I, I applied the primer with a roller, which just totally sucked. It was horrible. It was just a miserable experience and one I wish to never do again. There's so many tiny little bends and curves and rounds and it's just a major pain. I don't recommend painting with a roller or a brush. Spray it, spray it, spray it, spray it. Um, masking it off is a huge pain, but it's better than rolling it. Now I'm installing the wall that goes between the kitchenette and the head. This was made quite a while ago, but I didn't want to install it yet because kind of in the way and I wasn't done sanding, painting, etc. So now that I am, I can install it. And this was a flub because drilling a hole in this material bent about three drill bits and broke two of them. So I went through five quarter inch drill bits to make those holes in my little doors going in under the seat. So this is my little drop door. And I found that my little drill press device that I hook onto a regular drill worked so much better. Cause what was happening is once the drill bit went through the wood, it went quick and then it touched the hole saw, which bit really hard, scurried off to the side and made a ugly mark. And to make the holes smooth to the touch, I wanted to route the holes and the edges of everything that I ever might touch. I like round over edges. I do not like sharp 90 degree edges. So that was easy. And then of course I wanted to coat those surface areas with penetrating epoxy. Now, had I been smart, I would have saved that till the very end, but I didn't. Live and learn. And this stuff is called water putty. It's very similar to Plaster of Paris, except it has concrete in it or cement. And what I wanted to do was use it to support the imperfections, uh, the untrueness of the bottom of the wood and the top side of the hull. So what I'm gonna do next is after it dries, cover it with polyester resin and attach the wood to it that way and put polyester resin on the bottom of the wood and the top of the, the putty and it'll stay attached there as a step. Lots of little tiny things to do. Cut off long ends of screws. Um, there's some foam to protect my head when I bump it into the edge there, which I've done many times. This is how I handled my winch. I'm going to put my winch up high. I found it's less in the way there. The cable will go down through the hole that's underneath my phone and go down to the keel and I can attach it there through those little access doors. I covered my wood stump hunk in a boiled linseed oil so that'll make it a little tacky, which is good and keep it from being slippery. There's some of the finishing work I need to do. One thing I am really kicking myself for, and here's the worst part of it, I knew I was going to, is that I didn't do a good job of labeling and segregating the hardware as I removed it. And then to make matters worse, I purchased some new hardware that I knew I was gonna need to replace the old stuff with, but I may not have necessarily gotten rid of the old stuff if it wasn't horrible. So now I have to figure out what goes where. And it's not that I have to use everything because I'm gonna have leftovers. So I really made um, a lot more 
work for myself by not being organized when I took it all apart. This is the inside of my rudder gudgeon, and that's my backing plate I made. I made another one for the motor mount, which you can't quite see, but what I'm showing you here is overspray, little dribble of epoxy. Um, I had a hole there, but I moved it to the corner where you see that's a drain that I added for the cockpit because when it's on the trailer, it doesn't drain to these forward holes very easily until it fills up about six inches of water. So I thought I'd add another one and it just goes straight down. I put a through hole straight below that one. Um, the oil left a bit of a mess. I'm going to have to clean up. There's lots of finishing touches I need to do. I was going to tab in the seat backs and that's why you see the bare fiberglass there. But now I think I'm going to use some of that caulking to hold to go in between the gaps of the wood. I didn't feel that it needed the strength or the expense of epoxy. I'm gonna put a hole there as a drain that's gonna be underneath the head. So just in case water gets up in the front, it'll have a way to move back to the lowest point of the boat, which is right about underneath where I'm standing. Uh, this isn't the greatest winch. I think I paid $15 for it and I've already had some trouble with it. So I, I'm probably gonna get another one, but very similar. I like that it has gearing so it doesn't run away with you like the original Aquarius winch did. There you can see my caulking work and that screw that I need to cut out of there. Got the uh, e-berth in, there's an odd of the head. So guess what? This thing is pretty much ready to be put in the water. It can float and now that I have the motor mounted and the rudder mounted and the rudder all configured right. I think I can put this thing in the water. Now, you'll notice there's no sailing rigging, but hey, she's ready to go. Let's go put her in some water. I want to see if it floats. Hey, Mo. I want to see if there's any leaks. I want to see how she handles. I want to have a little bit of fun. Like I said, I've been working on this thing for three years and it's been not drudgery, but it's been one of those things hanging over my head to keep it going, keep the momentum going. And it's really hard when I go a week without to get back into it. So I've tried to work on it at least a little bit every week to keep it fresh in my mind. It would be really easy just to sort of let it drift out of my consciousness. So I grabbed my friend Mo, who also helped me put in the centerboard. Great guy and he's taking some shots here and you'll notice i forgot to put in the rudder so i can steer with the outboard it just doesn't steer quite as well as it will with the rudder but we're in a, a kind of a tight channel that has some shallow spots i wanted to miss so once we got out into the lake proper i put the rudder in and we could steer around a little bit better Moja's taking some video of the inside, enjoying the breeze and the movement and the feel of the water and the floating and oh, it was so great. I love being out there. I was a bit nervous because I don't have very much experience with boats, period. This is only the second time I've had this boat in the water. The first time was under sail only with no motor. This time is only motor only, no sails. So, I can't say I'm not gonna put her in the water again until she's ready to sail, I might, but I need to work on the motor a little bit. It doesn't idle well, and it doesn't put in a slow speed very well, so I wasn't thrilled with that. Plus, I don't know if I show you in this video coming up, but the motor, I think when I shifted into gear, one of the gears forward or reverse, it lurched and cracked a bit of the trans, actually it cracked a bit of the very bottom of the hole where it attaches to the, the transom. There's some teak underneath it and I had my motor mount crossing that teak thinking it would be stronger that way. And maybe it was, but it wasn't strong enough. So I need to do some reinforcing. Oh, if anybody knows how I can keep those foam things on there, please let me know. Um, certainly there's all kinds of adhesives, so don't just say glue, but like what kind of adhesive would work best? So anyways, I need to reinforce my transom. I need to make a larger 
a backing board for that motor. Um, the, the tiller and the rudder worked really well, so I don't think I need any changes on that. I, of course, have all those finishing touches to do. The windows and the, the hatch and the other hatch, the big hatch lid and my, the doors going into the inside. And of course, all the rigging for the sails. And a few more cleats. And that's about it. Yeah, so, oh, right. I need to paint the um, bit of the underside of the bottom where it was resting on the supports. So those still need to be painted. I have a couple little gaps there. But I figure I'll be sailing by next summer, if not sooner. This is gonna be my um, continuing project until I get it done and probably even before then. But hey, I put comfortably numb in the water and we had fun and uh, there's such a great sense of satisfaction just doing that it, it i was starting to fizzle out with my momentum but getting her out in the water and puttering around really enlivened me so i can't wait to get the rest of it done and get out there and sail and i will definitely bring you along for the ride i've got some more videos coming where I show you what I do with some of the finer details and the rigging. So, goodbye for now. I'll put out another video as soon as I can and enjoy your sailing. <laughs>